225 million years ago, a creature that looked like a dolphin swam in the ocean. The Shaunasaurus was the size of a whale with 60 razor-sharp teeth and two giant eyes. It could swim 35 miles an hour and dive 3,000 feet. Today, it's 40 feet off the ground. The Nevada State Fossil is on display at the Discovery Museum. Sculptors spent last weekend installing the life-size skeletal replica of the Shaunasaurus above the museum's lobby. Matt Sinclair is the executive director of the Discovery Museum. My initial thought was, wow, uh, you know, the opportunity to hang a, a replica of the state fossil right here in our lobby was a tremendous opportunity that we just couldn't hand, uh, pass up. The sculpture was created for the Burning Man Festival. Sinclair says it fits the museum's mission of trying to incorporate art as a better way to explain science. Kai Plaskon, Capital Public Radio News. Jerry Snyder, lead artist on the Ichthyosaur Puppet Project. How, how did you come up with this idea? Well, we were looking at doing a project that had a sort of Nevada-centered focus, that had a, a theme related to Nevada. And one of the things we came up with was the Ichthyosaur. It's a Nevada state fossil, and it was a you know it was a found near uh, this particular species was found near Berlin, Nevada. So it just kind of fit, um, and, and that's that's where we came up with the idea. Uh, on the playa, it was a puppet, and we, we had sort of conceived of it as this sort of late 19th century revival movement where this, this uh, kind of quack, uh, you know, preacher found the ichthyosaur bones and, and saw it as the, the bones of God, the self-portrait of God on, on Earth. And so he makes this traveling puppet show to, to uh, you know, to preach the gospel of the ichthyosaur. Um, so, so on the playa at Burning Man, it was a, an actual puppet, and people could manipulate it and make it move. In its current incarnation, it will be a static installation, so it won't, uh, it won't be able to, to move around. How did you get the crew, and how did you make a plan for how to do it? Well, I've been working on large-scale art projects for a few years at Burning Man, so I talked with the group of people who, who we worked with on a while, you know, our, our friends and collaborators. Um, I had a, oh, uh, the peer group. Um, you know, there's there's a number of individuals. Uh, I, I almost don't want to start naming people because I'll leave out key people. Uh, tell me, what is, it, what is it made out of? So it's made out of plywood. I've, I'm Partly because I'm just comfortable working in wood, I think it's an interesting material. Partly because we wanted it to look like something a, you know, 19th century miner would have had access to. I guess he wouldn't have had access to plywood itself, but he would have had access to wood. And then we, we rough cut the pieces and laminated them together, and then just did a whole lot of work with grinders to, to smooth them out, and then sand them, and then stain them. I spent a ton of time, you know, looking at images on the internet. And we took a field trip to Berlin, to the Nevada Ichthyosaur State Park, and uh, we, we may have had a fair amount of beer. And, and we also looked at fossils at the time. So um, it was fun. Oh, it was, it was, the whole process has been a blast. You know, it's been great working with, you, you know, a lot of super interesting people, a lot of very bright people, and, and a lot of people who are just, you know, committed enough to it that they're willing to spend all their evenings and weekends working on this project for, for several months. Uh, when you first started with it, did you imagine that it would end up in a, in a particular place or, or no? We had sort of had an idea of putting it possibly at the Discovery Museum or possibly at, at, a, at a Great Basin Brewery location. Um, the logistics wouldn't have worked out for a Great Basin Brewery location, so we, we started talking to the Discovery Museum. And they were they were pretty receptive, and they've been incredibly helpful and incredibly supportive. So we're we're very excited about that. Yeah. Uh, what's next? What do you want to do next? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, my my daughter has has kind of explicitly forbidden me from doing a project for a couple of years anyway. But uh, I might do another big dinosaur, maybe a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I don't know. What was the most challenging part of this? Would you say? Uh, you know, I, I think there's not. There was nothing really specific that was challenging, but it was always something. There were there were always, you know, something wouldn't work wouldn't work out quite how we thought. There's not really an instructable for building the giant ichthyosaur, so we had to make up the process as we went. We had to make up the the way it moved as a puppet. When we were when we were at Burning Man on the playa, it broke. 
you know, every day we'd have to go out in the morning and fix it. And then in the night it get broken again. Um, How is it getting broken? What, what were people doing to it to break it? People play pretty rough at Burning Man. They were swinging on it and, you know, making it, making it move a little more than we had anticipated. Uh, it, it, you know, just, it just got played with pretty hard. Which, which in itself is pretty gratifying. You know, I, I, I made it so people would have fun with it. Um, I just thought maybe they'd have a little less fun. What do you think the future of it is? Are you going to bring people in and say, hey, look, this is my project, or, or what? Uh, what? What do you think is next? I don't know. It's, it, it'll be hanging indefinitely at the Discovery Museum, so I'm, I'm really hoping people will come, come in and enjoy it, and, you know, I hope it'll, it'll have a good life there. It's kind of hard to get some of these projects uh, I- installed publicly, isn't it? It is, and this is this is kind of a unique project because it does have this very, it, you know, very science kind of focus and a very a very palatable public focus. Um, you know, it, it it's we're lucky in that the Discovery Museum had an appropriate space for it. You know, these large projects can be hard to place just because of the space, because of the what's required for their care and feeding. Um, but but yeah, we're. I'm, I'm really pleased to have a project that's so adaptable to that. You have to, you have to care for and feed the ichthyosaur. Well, just in terms of maintenance, and you know, we're going to have to inspect it periodically. If it was installed outside, it would require a great deal of maintenance. But just that sort of ongoing, you know, making sure it stays 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 in shape. How'd you decide on the eye color? Um, well. I, as far as I know, we don't know what color ichthyosaur eyes are, and so we kind of looked at different reptile eyes, and we sort of tried to approximate alligator eyes, um, and that's just kind of what what worked. I, I, I'm not pretending it's scientifically valid. Uh, any thank yous? It, it, you know, thanks very much to the generator. Thanks to Great Basin Brewery. Thanks to the Discovery Museum. Um, the Nevada Arts Council um, gave us a grant. The Burning Man organization was incredibly supportive. And mostly thanks to you know, our, all our volunteers who have been just tremendously helpful and, and wonderful through this process.